We are here at the 2013 National Education Reform Summit. I am speaking with economist Arthur Brooks. Uh, Mr. Brooks, thank you for taking the time to speak with us. Delighted to be here. So uh, you just wrapped up your panel in the main ballroom. Can you give us uh, a, a synopsis, like a brief uh, summary of what you said during your panel? Sure. Um, what, my remarks basically made the point that if we want to reform society through education reform, what we're trying to do is not to create more GDP growth or prosperity per se. I mean, those things are great. But what we're really talking about is giving more people a happier life. The secret to uh, a real reform, a reformation of how we do business is thinking about the happiness of the people. What I showed was that earned success, creating value with our lives and value in the lives of other people, is the secret to happiness. And that's best facilitated, it's instantiated most effectively. We have an education system that gives more people the right to rise, gives more people a way to pursue their happiness, and it shows them how they can pursue their, their best life. So you would support a, more of a free market system in public education? For sure. What we need is not a more free market system, although that is important. We need a more innovative system. We need a system that will, that will allow more entrepreneurs to find ways to serve more people and better. Uh, right now we have a, a pretty rigid and sclerotic system that does well for the top 10 and 15 percent of the population, does less well for people below that, abysmally fails in the bottom 20 to 25 percent. The most vulnerable parts of the population are stuck in systems that are geared to benefiting adults more than kids. We need new solutions that are going to break down the old paradigms. We can talk policies one by one that we need to break down, but we need actually a gestalt. We need a, a philosophy. We need the kind of the, you know, the folks that are watching us who are revolutionaries in their own industries and people who want to punctuate the equilibrium, that want to change society. That's the culture we need in education. What am I going to do to be a warrior for the people at the very bottom through innovation and new ideas? And how am I not going to be stuck in old ways of thinking? How do we really break through that old paradigm, though, um, with uh, public sector unions having the power that they have? We do that by undertaking a moral revolution. We don't do that by saying, I'm going to break up unions. No, you don't fight against things. You fight for people. And by fighting for people morally, you can actually find the allies, you can find the energy, you can find the resources to do extraordinary things. No social movement has ever succeeded unless it fights for people, and that's what we need to do here, too. Well, certainly, I just, I guess, the power of the, the teachers' unions has gotten in the way from making more substantive reforms, like time and time again. And so, I guess, for me, I went to business school. Uh, I majored in entrepreneurship. And uh, when you talk about having the freedom to innovate, doesn't that get in the way of it? Uh, of those innovations, sure. of, of that I mean, reform? Institutional. There are all kinds of institutional rigidities to it. You don't want to, you don't want to get into the business of fighting teachers' unions per se. You don't want to be in the business of fighting teachers per se. You need to have the positive, humanistic, moral approach of fighting for kids and doing it in the most all the innovative ways possible. You want to bring everybody into the tent. Teachers, they want to be pro-kid. Uh, the, the truth of the matter is when we can show people new ways of doing business, we can positively change these institutions as opposed to simply going to war with them and trying to blow them up. How can we improve the quality of our teachers? Teachers, uh, there are a lot of ways to do that. The same way we improve the quality of workers in, in any industry, you, you reward excellence. <laughs> Performance-based metrics. For sure. I right? mean, that's the only way to do it. It's the fair way to do it. See, we, we actually, you don't need to fight for better teachers. You need to fight for fairness. Right. And fairness means you reward hard work and personal responsibility and excellence and innovation, and you penalize the things that are not uh, serving kids the best. Look, the stakes in this thing are, are deep and important. The, the stakes in this thing are the bottom 25% of the income distribution that's being denied the civil rights and left behind. Uh, mediocrity simply can't be tolerated because that's what's hurting the poor in America today.